What was King's relationship with Malcolm X like? Well, at first there wasn't very much of a relationship. They were in kind of different worlds. Um, Martin Luther King was in the South. He was involved in a, in a major freedom struggle that occupied all of his time. Um, um, Malcolm X was in the North. Um, he was involved in, in a mostly religious movement. In fact, almost entirely religious movement because under Elijah Muhammad, uh, he did not allow uh, members of the Nation of Islam to get involved in, in, in politics, um, discourage them from even voting. At the time of the March on Washington, he forbade any member of the Nation of Islam from going to the march. So they were in these, these kinds of separate worlds, one of them just a limited uh, kind of insular, some would say even cult-like group, the Nation of Islam, um, which really uh, wanted separation from the rest of the society. And, and King, who was a, a um, activist minister, wanting to engage with the society um, to bring about civil rights change. Now, this begins to change in 1963 and 64 as Malcolm X becomes more dissatisfied with the constraints placed on him by Elijah Muhammad and wants to have a, a role in this unfolding movement that is reaching the black masses. Uh, he, um, he is actually at the March on Washington. He doesn't participate, but he observes from the sidelines and, and he writes to King. Um, wrote a number of letters to King trying to get King to come to his political forums uh, right before the March on Washington and writes a long letter to uh, to King and King never responds and that, which of course upsets uh, Malcolm X a great deal <coughs> but he's determined after 1963 especially after Birmingham and the March on Washington uh, to have some role in this this um, new and um, increasingly militant movement. He finally gets to uh, encounter King the first time in, in 1964. He kind of um, unexpectedly encounters him after King has testified at a congressional hearing and walks out the door and there's Malcolm X and walks up and uh, he grins and they, they shake hands and that's that famous photograph. They don't really say very much um, at, at that point. But after that, there's an effort to try to get them together to see if they can talk through some of their differences. I've talked to Clarence Jones, who was very close to King and also knew Malcolm X. And, you know, a number of people um, were trying to set up a meeting between the two of them. Malcolm X himself was trying to uh, have some relationship with the movement. He invites Fannie Lou Hamer to come to New York and uh, speak at his Audubon ballroom to his followers. And he tells his followers, I want you to get more politically involved. This leads to a lot of conflict with, with Elijah Muhammad, and eventually uh, Malcolm X is suspended because of his public comments uh, after Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy is assassinated. But after he's um, essentially expelled from the Nation of Islam, uh, Malcolm X um, has meetings, as I said, with, with uh, people in the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He even goes to Atlanta and tries to meet with King, um, writes him letters, but it just doesn't ever happen. He even goes to Selma uh, during the voting rights campaign. But King, as it happens, is in jail at the time, so, so Malcolm X is only able to meet with uh, Coretta Scott King. And he tells her that, uh, you know, I'm not here to make life more difficult for Martin Luther King. I'm trying to make it easier for him because if they see me as the alternative, white people see me as the alternative, maybe they'll listen to Dr. King more. So I think we can only speculate, you know, the, what would have happened because right within weeks of, of him going to, to Selma, uh, he's assassinated. And this meeting uh, never takes place. Um, but I think both of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King respected each other. Uh, King 
uh, felt that what Malcolm was doing was counterproductive, but he also felt that uh, Malcolm might have a, a great future if he gave up his not so much uh, violent activity, but just violent rhetoric. And, and I think that was part of King's criticism of Malcolm, is that he, he talked in a militant way, but he really wasn't militant in the sense of standing up to the kinds of segregationist power that King had to stand up to every day.